All right, so these, this is a little blurb on the LVMK range. You can see this is a 3048 LVMK, which is a 3 kilowatt 48 volt unit. We have them in the 2024, which is a 2 kilowatt 24 volt, and we have them in the 1012 LVMK. All got the same charge controller inputs, which is 145 volts maximum. And uh, this one has got a 4 kilowatt input. The 24 volt unit has a 2 kilowatt maximum input and the 1000 watt unit has a 1000 watt maximum input. So the 80 amp MPPT charge controllers. 80 amps times the battery voltage equals the wattage of the solar. Now, these little models, perhaps we've, we've underrated them for a long time. Here is an, what we have over here. We have some solar panels connected. Okay, this is very, very rough, guys. I just This is our workshop over here. So we have some solar connected over there. We can let's turn the solar off for now. We've got four panels or two panels in series connected twice. Now, what is very, very fascinating about this unit is we have it on a variac. So I know a lot of you guys have got uh, yeah, like I said, excuse the mess. I know a lot of you guys have strange voltages from your generator or your utility source. Right now, I'm showing you we've got 102 volts input. And this inverter has got double conversion. In other words, it'll take the AC input voltage, it'll convert it to DC, and then the DC will, will run back through the inverter and give you AC output. These LVMK units are the only units that have got a zero uh, conversion time or uh, breakage time. In other words, if the utility had to drop off, if it had to switch over to utility or inverter, there is zero downtime. It's going to give you 120 volts all the time. So this is perfect for a for miners, um, et cetera, et cetera, where you don't want any downtime for CPU CPU glitches. So what we're going to do is vary the input voltage over there. And you'll notice that as we vary the input voltage, let's take it even down some more and up some more, the output always stays at 120 volts. All right, so we have 96 volts now. It didn't detect. Leave it at 96 volts for a little while. See, 106 volts, still giving out 120, okay? Now, another special thing about this unit is you can even up the voltage all the way to up it, up it as high as it'll go, all the way, okay? 154 volts is obviously too much. It'll turn off, go down a bit, a little bit, until we hear it click. And when the, when the symbol flashes, it means the voltage is, is out of range. There we go. So 135 volts, it clicked means that it's going to accept that and it's busy charging the battery at the same time okay so it has a voltage range from about 90 to 135 volts it also has some other features that no other inverter can do in other words let's say you have a thousand watt generator gas generator and you will need to power a thousand five hundred watt load it can take that thousand watt from the generator and it can add the solar power to that to power the load. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you. Now, right here we have some modes. And I want to show you the modes here. Hold down the enter button. The first mode is USB. So utility is the first priority. Then solar, then battery. So what will happen right now is if I plug in a heat gun, which we've got over here on this demo for you. The heat gun is. will show you how many amps that draws. Uh, then we'll turn the solar on and you'll notice that the that the input voltage or the input amps is not going to fluctuate at all. The solar is going to pump into the battery and the utility is going to keep on powering the load. But then there's another mode after that called, um, let me get to it quickly, push down, we push enter again, it's called SUB. Solar is the first priority, then utility, then battery. So this was the mode that will add solar and utility to the load and whatever's left will go into the battery. Okay, so at first we're just going to play with USB. Okay. So to keep the noise down, we've got a heat gun connected out there and on full. So we plug it in. Okay, the inverter fan comes on, which is pretty normal. And then what we have over here is I'm going to set this thing. I've got a clamp meter. I'm going to set it to amps so we can see how many amps are coming from the AC power. All right, let's see that. 
So this is the AC input that we've got over here. And we can see there's 17 amps powering our heat gun right now. So let us turn the solar on. Oh, wait, before we even do that, let's see how many amps are going to the battery. So I'm going to stick this onto DC. This is charging the battery at the same time. Zero that. And we've got 9.7 amps going to the battery right now. So it's charging the battery at the same time it's powering the load. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn the solar on. Let's flip them both up. And we'll notice that as the solar comes on, it should charge, should start charging the battery a little bit harder. And we'll notice there, the solar just barely showing the solar icon coming up. And there the solar is starting to power the load. And you'll notice that these amps now will start to climb. So now we can see our amps to the battery are at 25 amps with the solar connected and the heat gun is still going strong in the back end. And I'll show you, put it to, I'll put it to AC amps to show you the heat gun going over there. AC amps over there and we put that into the input. And we're still pulling 17 amps from utility, okay? So now what we're gonna do is switch, put it back to DC amps, zero it, put it across the battery and switch off the solo. Okay, we turn off the solo and immediately the utility is now charging because we've got that set to 10 amps on the uh, inverter. We, there's a setting over there which we tell it how many amps to charge from utility power. So we can limit how many amps we, we charge from the generator. 60 amps is the total amps with solar and utility combined. Sorry for the noise, but this 60 hertz and that's the utility charging setting 11 is set to 10 amps. I've just adjusted it down for this video right now. Okay, so now I want to push escape button. I'm going to set the other charging mode right now to solar utility battery. All right. And you saw last time the amps to the battery went up, but the amps from the supply stayed the same. Now we're going to push escape. <clears throat> we're going to leave. I'm going to put the clamp because this is the, the more exciting part. The clamp on the AC input. Let's switch the solar on now. You can see it's 17 amps and the heat gun's still going. So this means you can run a bigger, like a, a 1,500 watt or 2,000 watt or a load uh, off a generator that's underrated with solar added to it. So there it dropped it off, it took 40, 4 amps off the load and it added the solar added that and subtracted 4 amps from the load, from the utility. And let's have a look at our battery. Now obviously if we had more solar, the more and more solar we add, the more it will subtract from the, uh, the utility or the generator supply. So now if we set it to AC, this DC amps over there, we zero it. Okay, so hardly any amps going into the battery right now because most of it's being used. It's going to cycle backwards and forwards, pulling from the battery, pulling from the solar. But the main thing I wanted to show you here was that, I think the sun went behind the cloud there. The main thing we wanted to show you was that the utility amps came down when we added solar power, which is something that no other inverter can do. All right. So that's the beauty of the LVMK models. Thanks for watching.